You're probably watching this because you're running out of storage space. But you don't want to keep stacking external drives up like Lego bricks every time a project lands, right? Not only is that expensive, it's downright chaotic. Drives get misplaced, projects get duplicated, files go missing. And if you're working with a growing post team, forget about it. There's just no way to collaborate smoothly on external storage. So what do you do? That's where shared storage comes in and more specifically, where Ugreen comes in. I've been in the post-production world for years. VFX, feature film, broadcast, digital, I've used pretty much every storage medium out there, from USB hard drives and RAIDs to enterprise-level NAS setups. But when our team started growing and working remotely, we hit a bit of a wall. And the wall was called, where is that file? That's when we realized it wasn't just about capacity, it was about workflow. If you're new to the term, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. Think of it like a tiny dedicated computer that lives on your network, not on your desk. There's no extra cables, which means no mess. Just plug it into your router or your switch and everyone on the same network can access the same files. Some models even let you access it remotely, which is perfect if your team is spread out like ours is. Because NAS is faster, cleaner, and more scalable. External drives require multiple cables, are prone to failure, and make it harder to find your files. A NAS simplifies all of that. You also get RAID protection, so if a disk fails, you don't lose all your data, which, trust me, I've happened, and you don't want to experience it. With RAID, you just replace the disk and keep working. Synologies and QNAPs are great. I've used them on lots and lots of different jobs over the years. But if you're looking for a more affordable option that still offers all the essentials for video editing, Ugreen is becoming a bit of a front runner. With speeds fast enough for 4K editing across multiple users and remote access, plus the ability to use any hard drives that you like, saving you money, Ugreen is an attractive package. Plus, it gives us the same granular user permissions across freelancers, assistants, clients, without having to worry about who might be poking around in older archive projects. So for my team, it was the same footage, same camera, but the difference in our workflow was night and day. We went from, who has the latest edit? Where's the backup drive? Have you duplicated that card yet? To, let's all work from the same folder. Footage is uploading, ready in five, four, three, to footage is already backed up, you're ready to go. That alone saved us hours every week. Okay, so now you know what NAS is and why it is of a benefit to your workflow, let's have a look at some of the different systems that Ugreen offer for different sized teams. For a team of one or maybe two people, we have the Ugreen NASSYNC DXP2800. This is a four core 3.4 gigahertz four thread CPU with an Intel N1000 chip inside. This has eight gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, which is expandable to 16 gigabytes. Now with all of the NAS systems that I'm gonna to talk to you about, I do advise that you upgrade the RAM because it makes a huge difference to read and write access speeds when you have multiple people all trying to access the footage at the same time. This is a two base system capable of up to 64 terabytes of storage. It houses one 2.5 gigabit LAN port, which allows speeds of up to 312 megabits per second transfer as long as you have a switch or an adapter capable of taking 2.5 gigabit connections. Connections, gigabits, all very important. I have a video on the very subject just up here. This will allow a single person to edit 4K footage, no problem. You can edit 4K footage with multiple users as long as you are using proxies, intermediates that allow for that bandwidth that your NAS can carry. But it also has a slot for M2 SSDs, which allows SSD caching of your media. And again, this goes for all of the NAS systems. SSD caching can be really helpful if you're using media frequently across projects. Say if you have a podcast where you use media all the time that gets used in each episode, that media can be stored on the SSD and give you faster access. If you're on a new project every single day, every single week, SSD caching won't really help you. This NAS also allows up to RAID level one support. So if one disk fails, it is mirrored onto the other, which means technically half of your storage is eaten up by that mirror. Something to bear in mind. This is a great first NAS for around $350 without disks and is 
brilliant for home video editors or teams of, I say, one to two people when you're really growing that small first team. I'll put a link to all of the NAS systems down in the description below. They are affiliate links. They don't cost you any more money, but they do help the channel out at the same time. The next system for small teams of one to four people is the Ugreen NASYNC DXP4800 Plus. The plus is important. This is a five core, six thread, 4.4 gigahertz Intel Gold 8505 CPU with eight gigabytes of DDR5 RAM expandable up to 64 gigabytes this time. And I really do recommend on this system upgrading from the standard eight gigabytes when you have four people all trying to access the same footage eight gigabytes isn't really going to cut it. Definitely expand the storage, the RAM on this one. This is moving up to a four bay system which allows up to 112 terabytes of storage. That is in RAID 0. We don't recommend RAID 0. There's no protection. The defining part of this NAS is that for the first time it has one 10 gigabit ethernet port plus another 2.5 gigabit. The 10 gigabit is important this means that you now need to go up a level in terms of your switch and cabling. Again, video up here on that very topic, which is really important for you to be able to get the bandwidth speeds that you need to be able to edit 4K footage in real time for multiple users. Again, SSD caching via the M2 slots in here. There is a card reader built in, but also now we are ready for RAID level 10 with four drive bays all filled. This gives better redundancy and performance across your NAS. This NAS without discs is priced around $700 and is perfect for collaborative editing across, I say up to about four different people. The next system is for four or more users and I have actually skipped a system here because I am going with the Ugreen NASYNC DXP8800 Plus. And I've missed out the 6800 because on paper they have the same specs, it's just a different amount of drive bays that you have to be able to fill. So therefore I would recommend if you're getting the same specs, you might as well get the faster speeds across eight, that's not eight, that, across eight different bays, which allows you up to 208 terabytes of storage in RAID 0. But again, we don't recommend that. Here we get two 10 gigabit ethernet ports, which you can bond for 20 gigabit per second throughput. This does not mean 20 gigabit per second speeds. This is 20 gigabit per second bandwidth total so you're getting 10 gigabits speeds, but shared across two of them in bonded to make one connection. It's confusing, but basically you are able to share that 10 gigabit speeds to more people than if you just had the one port. It's worth doing. You have the card reader and the SSD cache via M2 slots on here as well. But on this system, you also have if you wanted to use them, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which allows more users to connect without having to use ethernet. Using the Thunderbolt 4 ports, you can get up to 40 gigabits per second speeds. So it is faster than the ethernet, but you only get two of those ports. Using the ethernet, you can have four more, all the way up to, I would recommend max 10 people using this system all at the same time. If you use the Thunderbolt 4 ports as well, I'd say you could probably go up to 12. This is definitely a pro level setup for larger teams fast enough for multiple people all editing and accessing 4K footage at the same time. As long as you have those fast network switches, ethernet adapters, dual 10 gigabit per second bonded connection, Thunderbolt 4, utilize all of it so that you can work at those speeds and help you work smarter, not harder, which is what we do here, by the way, at DigiPro Tips. It's all about working smarter, not harder. It gives you more time to be creative. So if you haven't already and you like the video, give it a like, hit the subscribe button so that you can stay informed of when I upload and you find out more tips just like this. Now this does come at a premium because this system without any disc is $1,500, which for a system that is going to serve 10 plus people, that's not that bad actually. Now we've gone through all of these systems over here, you're saying, which drives should I actually be using with these systems? Because there are so many out there to choose from. Well. I have one that I do like to recommend because I've used them across all of my systems. I've used various different brands, but the one that I always come back to is Seagate Iron Wolf drives. They're just durable. They stand the test of time. They also have SSD versions if you need some serious speed or you do want to fill those M2 slots in your NAS for SSD caching. This isn't about fancy tech, it's about the right tech. And hopefully this video has helped you decide 
which tech that is for your team and your workflow. If you're still unsure about what the benefits of a NAS are, I have a dedicated video on just that thing right here.